Once again, we're joined by May Habib, who is the co-founder and CEO of Writer. And earlier, she started, in, by the way, Writer uses artificial intelligence to help companies like Twitter and Postmate write well and craft clear, consistent, and on-brand content. And May has a list of 10 words that we should all really be thinking about, alternatives to, and potentially even avoiding. And so we've already gone through, May, the first five and discussed why alcoholic, homeless, addict, elderly, and whiteless. So let's continue. This one, oh, this one's going to be hard, but <laughs> insane. Because, I mean, I I use it. I know a lot of people who use it. And you say things like, oh, that was insane. So why shouldn't we use it? And what's an alternative? Totally. Uh, mental illness has so much stigma associated with it. And uh, this term definitely perpetuates uh, a lot of that um, uh, stereotyping. And it's already hard enough for people to seek help uh, who do suffer from mental illness. Um, and that's a huge problem, you know, in um, in the space itself. So yeah, a phrase that isn't steeped in, in that kind of stigma, like a person with a mental health condition, uh, is is much more appropriate. And actually, I, I slipped up there too. I said suffered from, mm -hmm. um, and it's usually best to stay neutral as as we discussed, and and not really associate um, you know words of victimhood along with the the condition. So is it better to take it? Because I mean, when I say something like, oh my gosh, that was insane and amazing, I'm not referring to a person. And so where you are coming from, do you think it's better to just remove it? from uh, yeah i i think so i mean when when it's about objects and and not people um you know that's definitely one shade removed um but she's insane he's insane uh definitely on the uh on the wrong side of language use okay how about and you're gonna have to help out with this one because i've never even though my degrees are in english i've never used this term uh -huh. dummy value i've just never yeah used well, dummy in general and, and dummy value, um, especially in software, has come to mean placeholder. Um, and, uh, and so much of the move to inclusive language is just about examining the roots of the words that, that we're using and, and why. Um, and so dummy value just is not uh, uh, very nice. Uh, and using something more descriptive like placeholder value um, is, uh, is, is more appropriate. And you would see it in software like, you know, in this Excel sheet, uh, put a dummy value in this cell, uh, but you can certainly use placeholder instead. And that's, well, and now it's funny because I'll say, um, or we will say like in the, the um, publication uh, world, dummy copy. Yeah, I, exactly. I have said now and now that I'm saying that I have said because I don't like dummy copy because that's how errors happen if you put something yep. that's to be <laughs> there. So I have said that. Okay. But I also am not a, I've never been a, a, someone who feels good about calling people names and the word yeah. dummy just like to know when a kid has been called that or something. I mean, that hurts my heart for them totally. as well. All right. Totally. Continuing on sex change. Yeah, um, you know, in in the trans community, um, well, for, first of all, I would want to say that you know everything that we're talking about here, uh, there are folks who have spent their whole whole careers dedicated to coming up with language um, that is is more representative of of the communities, um, and so what we do at Writer and what our product does is really seek to make those guidelines mainstream faster. Um, but absolutely, the um, the communities themselves are responsible for putting out guidelines and, and putting out um, uh, suggestions. Um, and so uh, when it comes to a word like um, uh, uh, sex change, um, the operation itself uh, is an incredibly personal matter, and um, calling a transition a sex change uh, really puts an unnecessary emphasis on the surgical aspect of, of transitioning, uh, and that's something that's very private. And uh, for someone to have to reveal that about themselves when they're talking about a, a gender transition is just not very respectful. Um, and, uh, and so saying, talking about gender transitions, um, is, uh, is definitely a better way to go. Um, and even with regard to the, the surgery itself, you know, talking about it, uh, sex reassignment, um, or gender affirmation are, are much more neutral ways to talk about it, um, versus sex change. 
one thing that I'm hoping our um, Great Day Live viewers will do, I mean, you you don't have to agree. And that's the thing. Yeah. There are some words in here that I, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel mm -hmm. about that. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Send us an email, greatday at whh11.com. I have friends who are out, who who would say to you, I'm an alcoholic. And yeah. you think of, you know, when we see people who say I'm say their name and then say I'm an alcoholic. So it, it'll be very interesting just to to gauge where people are in this. But here's the last word that you say that we should avoid to use. And this one is non-white. So explain explain how how that's used and then why you think people should avoid using that. Yeah, um, it, it has become uh, more common to see that when people are kind of unsure whether they should say black or people of color or, you know, any number of things to describe someone or, or a community and uh, non-white um, is kind of the fallback. The problem with that is it assumes white as the default identity. Um, and it creates a sense that those who don't fit into, you know, that particular identity are are othered or somehow less than. And so it's best to just avoid non-white altogether. Um, uh, people of color is definitely very widely accepted. Um, if it's in reference to the black community, black with a capital B has has gone mainstream. Uh, and so it's it, it's best not to think about um, or talk about white as as default um, if you want to remain inclusive and um, uh, uh, neutral. And may I know that you've faced this, especially because, I mean, this is what you do. And so, of course, you face people who, who have opposing points of view. And I'm going to ask this just as the, you know, I have to play a little. Totally. <laughs> At what point are we crossing the line where, well, I mean, how am I supposed to know how someone else wants to be referred to? For instance, you said, I mean, non-white, but I, on on many occasions, will refer to myself as a person of color. I'm multiracial. And then I will have people who refer to themselves as Black or African descendants of slavery or who will say that I shouldn't be referring to myself as a person of color. And that, yep. that diminishes that. And so at what point is... The, is just this too much? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, first of all, ask yourself if any of this is relevant at all, if you're about to say it or about to write it. Um, because if it is not relevant, uh, if there is absolutely no reason to be thinking about this aspect of somebody's identity, we all have so many aspects to our identity. Just don't say it, don't write it. Um, that's number one. Number two, ask the person. So, uh, you know, it is um, uh, becoming so much more common to ask somebody about their preferred pronouns. Um, asking somebody uh, about this is, may be uncomfortable at first, um, but people will definitely appreciate it versus, um, uh, you know, coming up with something something insensitive. I think, um, you know, the the era of political correctness, I mean, even that term is is outdated. Uh, it's really becoming about um, just plain old respect uh, and thinking about people as themselves um, and not their identities. And, and that's what um, folks are seeking to do by using more inclusive language. I really appreciate that. I mean, I use words for a living. And so I, I try mm -hmm. to be thoughtful as I can. And I'm, I'm with some of the people who are out there going, OK, I'm just not going to talk at all. Sometimes <laughs> just when you get something all of a sudden you have to learn something new, but I I always try to have one thing in mind. What does it hurt me to mm -hmm. refer to someone as they prefer to be referred to? It doesn't. Yep, totally. It, it doesn't. But when somebody, I was very recently asked in a um, large group of people when we were talking about diversity and inclusion and they, they particularly asked people of color, um, what do you prefer? And I just said, Angie, that's no, I love that. I love that. Totally. And and I meant that. But May, yeah. I hope you'll come back on Great Day Live again soon because I mean I feel like we could just continue talking. <laughs> but thank, thank you, you so much. Really appreciate it. Time. Thanks so much.